Greetings, pen pals. I haven't done a Mont Blanc pen in I can't even remember how long, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to do this Mont Blanc pen today. Um, this pen has a little bit of uh, interesting history, just a little interesting. So uh, on March 9th of 2020, now remember that date, March 9th of 2020, my wife and I went to the Long Island Pen Show. Um, now, given that it happened on March 9th of 2020, that pen show that we went to very well might have been the last pen show in the United States or even in the world uh, to this date. Um, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know uh, uh, of any others that have actually occurred since then, but there very well might have been. But it was certainly the last pen show I've been to. Hopefully, we'll get to go to one again soon. But everything pretty much shut down immediately after that. So that was... Uh, a kind of uh, a sad day. But one thing that did happen, my wife and I both bought a few pens. I only bought one or two. She bought, I think, four or five. The, all the ones she bought, for the most part, she has not been using over nearly the past year because she's been working from home, hasn't been going to the office, hasn't really felt like inking them up, etc. So I thought, well, it's a shame that uh, a lot of very nice pens that she bought that day at the pen show were going uh, completely uh, just sitting uh, idle in boxes and not being used or shown or anything. So I thought I'd ink one up and show it to you folks. Today, this is a Mont Blanc 144 in steel and carbon fiber. So usually when you think of a Mont Blanc 144, you think of something like this. So this is a 144 that I have. Uh, this is from the late 80s, early 1990s. I am the original owner. I've, yes, I've had this pen for probably close to 35 years or so, or, you know, certainly over 30. Um, um, but uh, as you can see, it is the same size, but very different materials. Um, this is the classic resin and gold-plated uh, gold-plated uh, gold uh, pen. Um, um, in terms of comparing to some other pens, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, we're talking about a very conventionally sized pen. This is the smallest pen of sort of the, the classic Mont Blanc uh, 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 Meisterstück line. We'll do some comparisons to some of those other ones in a little bit. Um, it has a little bit of weight to it because it's, it's, like I said, it's steel, mostly steel. There is some carbon fiber jacketing the cap, but the carbon fiber doesn't do much to reduce the weight because there is still an awful lot of steel here. Weighs in at 24 grams. So, like I said, we compared it to uh, this uh, one classic sort of 144. Can we compare it to some other Mont Blanc pens you might be familiar with? We certainly can. Okay, so let's compare it with a bunch of other Mont Blanc pens of similar styling. So this is the one we're looking at today, the 144 in steel and carbon fiber. As we said, it's the same dimensions as the classic 144 in uh, resin. Um, let's compare it to some other ones, like I said, of the same style. So as you can see, it is, they, they, as the model numbers go up, they do get longer and girthier, but only to a point. So when we go from the 144 to the 146, it gets girthier and it definitely gets longer. But when we go from the 146 to the 149, the length is exactly the same and it just gets girthier. Yes, the 146 and the 149 are the same length. A lot of people don't realize that. They just assume it gets bigger in all dimensions. It doesn't, it just gets girthier. And of course the nib gets bigger and stuff like that. I'm talking about, we're talking about the external uh, dimensions uh, of the pen. So we're going one, we have 144, 144, 146, 149. You can see the, the change in uh, dimensions uh, here. One other thing to keep in mind is that both these pens are cartridge converter pens and these two pens are piston fillers. I think it's probably worth comparing the nibs on these pens. So let's do that right now. Okay, there's some interesting things going on here in terms of both uh, size and metal content when uh, we uh, look at these nibs. So, all of these nibs are 14 karat, except for the pen we're reviewing today. This, this is the, um, the carbon fiber and uh, steel uh, Mont Blanc 144. Uh, this is an 18 karat nib. My vintage 144, uh, from the uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s, has a 14 karat nib. The 146, which is a very new 21st century 146, also has a 14 karat nib. 
Now my 149 has a 14 karat nib, but only because it's a vintage 149. Newer 149s have an 18 karat nib. And as you can see, the size also goes up. So these two are same pen, same nib size, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, these get progressively bigger with the 146 and the 149. Also worth pointing out, they all have du dual tone nibs, again, with the exception of my older 144, which has a mono uh, tone um, gold, uh, gold nib. All right, before we say farewell to this older 144, one thing I will point out that is also different about these two pens um, is this has a screw off cap. And this is uh, surprisingly a pull cap. So that's another uh, big, uh, big difference between this uh, uh, from this 35 year old ish 144 and the uh, the newer uh, the newer model. All right, let's do a little bit of a rundown on the parts on this pen. Around the cap band, it says Mont Blanc and Meisterstück. Now, Meisterstück is the German word for masterpiece. That's all it means. Um, it's essentially the branding that Mont Blanc gives this particular sort of flagship style of pen uh, that, they, that, they, that they have. Um, like I said, we're talking about a steel pen with carbon fiber. The carbon fiber, you can't feel any aspect of the carbon fiber. It has like a, um, um, a resin coating, clear coat over it. So this is completely smooth and just it feels just like the normal resin, but you can see the carbon fiber underneath. It looks, looks really nice. Looks really, if you like carbon fiber, that look, it's, it's very nice. It's got that very sort of industrial look. The clip, classic Mont Blanc clip. Uh, that they've been style they've been using basically since like forever um uh if around the uh, uh of course uh we're talking about uh mont blanc so of course you do get the mont blanc snowflake logo on the top of the pen and around on the clip band it says germany and has the pen's serial number um you also notice a sticker which has the nib size on it. Mont Blanc nibs are not labeled. They don't have the nib size anywhere on the pen physically. So they do put stickers on the, on the pens to indicate the, the nib size. Um, like we said, it's a screw to uncap pen. It takes one and three quarter turns to unscrew. Um, again, you could use this unposted. I find it short. It does post uh, and posts, uh, post pretty well, pretty well. There is a a pretty significant liner inside the cap to keep it um, keep it uh, moist, etc. Uh, the section. Um, so this, I think, a lot of people will be happy with this. This is very slick steel. This is resin, which is not nearly as slick. So in terms of grippage, if you don't like smooth metal sections, you might be happier with this because again, you don't have that. This sort of step down and these threads are nothing so to speak of and you do have a nice uh, steel trim ring um, uh, there um, in terms of the nib we're talking about a pretty nice small ish as you saw we're not talking about a big nib here this is like a number five ish size nib um, it um, it says mont blanc uh, 18k 750 has the mont blanc logo and of course 4810 some scroll work and it's um, a two-tone nib 4810 is the height in meters of Mont Blanc, which is the mountain uh, in, uh, in France that the company, the German company Mont Blanc is named after. Yes, Mont Blanc is a German company. Um, um, again, most people think it's a French company because of the name. And of course, it has a uninspiring uh, plastic uh, feed and as we said earlier this is a cartridge converter filled pen uses Mont Blanc is a standard international uh, type of converter they don't use uh, proprietary converters or um, cartridges which is nice it does come with a nice Mont Blanc converter which actually screws in but you could use an, an off-the-shelf converter or uh, certainly off-the-shelf uh, cartridges um, uh, as well which is which is quite uh, quite nice. Um, so that is pretty much the parts of this pen. We're talking about, uh, you know, your very typical high end ultra posh build quality Mont Blanc pen. Are these the greatest pens in the world? You know, that's a matter of, uh, that's a matter of opinion. Are they worth the, the very premium price you pay for them? Again, 
that's debatable as well. I think I'm going to do a video just focusing on Mont Blanc as a brand and sort of give my opinions and impressions of Mont Blanc as a brand because that's a question I get asked actually a lot. As a fountain pen enthusiast, people who don't know much about fountain pens say, oh, do you have a lot of Mont Blanc? You must have a lot of Mont Blanc pens now. In fact, I actually do, but that doesn't necessarily make me sort of a a particular Mont Blanc authority, but uh, I will, I'm going to put a video together where I just, just go over sort of my overall impressions of Mont Blanc as a brand. So that'll be forthcoming at some point. Um, but that's about all I have to say about this particular Mont Blanc pen for, uh, for today. Um, um, uh, my wife is actually sleeping while I make this video. Um, when she wakes up, I will make sure to thank her for loaning me the pen um, to, uh, to be able to film it for you folks. So that's about it for this pen. Uh, of course, you do want to see it right, and I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, what I'm writing with here today is a Mont Blanc. Number 144 in steel and carbon fiber. And um, this has a 18-carat uh, nib in medium. Um, this, this writes quite well. It's pretty smooth. It has what I would say minimal feedback. Um, writes, uh, writes pretty 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 nicely i would say it's about average wetness um definitely flows well etc so we're talking about a pretty pretty nice flowing uh pen um in terms of reverse writing it's a bit scratchy and doesn't flow great but that would definitely take it down to a let's say an extra extra fine but you could really only only eat out a couple of a couple of words there so nothing i wouldn't count on being able to do too much in way of reverse writing um, and in terms of flex this is not really a flex nib you really can't really push it or anything like that so no this is not a flexing nib at all um so that's about all we got to say about this very, very nice pen today. But you know what else would be very, very nice? If you folks could all please like, comment, share, and subscribe, that would be really, really appreciated. So again, that's about it for this pen. Let's talk about this ink now for just a moment. All right, this ink is also from Mont Blanc. This is Mont Blanc. Oyster Gray. It's a pretty nice gray ink. Uh, like all the normal Mont Blanc inks, like not the special editions or anything, it comes in this kind of cool, oh, let's, let's pull the camera back so you can see the shape of the bottle. It comes in this kind of cool shoe shaped bottle which is actually quite practical has like a main res reservoir and the ink well here so as the level ink runs down you can tilt it forward and fill up this area here so there is a sort of practicality to this and they're pretty pretty nice uh, inks the uh, the normal sort of production line mont blanc inks the special edition mont blanc inks are also quite nice but they are pretty expensive the normal mont blanc inks you get a nice big bottle uh, 60 milliliters for I think 25 bucks or so. So they're not, they're actually priced pretty reasonable in terms of inks. Let's take a look at the way this looks, would look on our color card. So here's the color card for the Mont Blanc Oyster Gray. We can compare it to some other grays. Here it looks, uh, here's what it looks like next to it. Rose Shizuku Fuyu Soigun. Um, you could definitely see this one's definitely more of a bluish gray. And here it is next to the Diatrumentis Silver Gray. Similar color, but the Diatrumentis ink is much, much more saturated than the uh, Mont Blanc uh, Oyster Gray. But a pretty nice gray ink, all in all. Um, you do get a bit of variation. Not, it's not too dark, um, and it looks pretty nice. That's what it looks like on this 
Rhodia paper, let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right, like we said, this ink is Mont Blanc. Oyster gray. And again, looks pretty nice. Um, again, we definitely get, uh, especially on this Tomori River paper, you're really getting some nice color variation, which is definitely appreciated and welcome. It's a nice gray. It's definitely on the lighter side, <clears throat> but it is a nice, nice uh, uh, gray ink. All right. Well, I think that is going to just about do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it because I know I sure enjoyed making it for you. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.